last but not least, on the 28th of uh, August, I attended the NAACP's uh, Mike Hester training on uh, partial and bias training that he gives to all. So uh, the presentation to the new recruits was at the 28th or 29th of August? 29th. 29th. I have a report as well. Um, I, I wasn't here in the August meeting to report this, so this was on August 4th. Um, uh, we hosted a community event. It was hosted by a Hickman High School recent graduate, and that was in collaboration with uh, the City and Shelter Insurance and uh, Lieutenant Jeff Jones made it a point of attending that event. He interacted with the community. He took the high school student kind of around the community a little bit for a ride along and recruiting folks to come to that uh, community event. So just a positive interaction community-wide. And that was at Douglas Park, excuse me. And uh, I presented at the West Ash Neighborhood Association on the 30th of August. A room of about 15, and no one knew about us. No one knew about us. Rather engaged. No. Uh, I didn't have any. It was kind of a last minute. Thing. What was the date? <coughs> the 30th of August. Anything else? Seeing nothing, let's move on to item six, old business, outreach, and public communications. And I believe that was something that was begun at the August meeting, so I'm going to let you. Oh, yeah, I mean, it was just one of those recurring kind of conversations we have about um, outreach and those kind of things. Some of the members had ideas, and I don't know if they were going to do something between last meeting and this meeting, so. Um, What's that? Just left it on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're always talking about. I have a question about interfacing with the uh, public. Do you need any presentation or a handout other than the brochure so that uh, there's a consistent presentation? Following on to that, should we, when we get questions back from whichever group we're talking with or interacting with, in compiling ask questions as an additional handout I think it'd be good to keep a list of FAQs because if you get it once you're going to get it over and over and why why I answer it more than once I think that's a great idea what about a, an actual presentation though I mean, I think some like talking points at least, because I, I don't know if every venue is going to have a PowerPoint. Access yeah, and I, and no, that. and I, yeah, I, that's where my head went initially because of my background. But uh, this would be more of a handout. Uh, doesn't even need to be a handout. Maybe it's an informal, uh, a document that the board would approve, would review and approve, that has talking points, so that we're sure. You know, if you go to Group A and you list and you hit three things. Go to group B and you hit two of those and one other, not a consistent message. So basically like a one sheet of bullet points. Yeah. Should we start compiling something like that? Because it sounds like all, all of us are starting to get out more. I have a question. No. No. Are we allowed? It is very difficult to, because then you're subject to records retention, um, so you would have to comply with all the laws. So if that's something you all want to take on, then that will be something you all will need to have to manage. The law department consistently recommends against it, but there are um, departments in the city who have their own PIOs, who have all sorts of social media feeds. Um, the city as a whole, last I heard, part of the going to a consistent logo, they were also looking at reducing the number of presences in all the social media, so that would be more controlled by the public communications department. I don't know 
I don't go to those meetings, so I don't know where they are in that process, but it is more complex than just your own personal Facebook page because then you are creating a public record and then you have to manage that record for the length of retention. Um, social media isn't really built that way. Well, I say that because where I work at, I manage two Facebook pages. And people don't read. Go to an event and people oftentimes you find them somewhere because people just don't read, but people read social media. People will read Twitter, they will read Snapchat, and you know, and in in reality, in doing a business, you gotta make fits fit for you. And what fits mean is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. So for us to get out there more, we got to make fits fit for us. And, and that's the reality because everything is going electronic. I mean, you go to a restaurant, two people might be sitting at the same table, but both people are on their phones on, on some kind of social media site. And that's where we're going. And that's where we've been. And just creating another piece of paper to give somebody where we already know that they probably 80 to 100 percent are not going to technically read it. We're under but a kind of a unique situation because of open records, open meetings, and God knows what other records not, retention it's gonna requirements. Post, it's not that we're going to post things on the social media site that would um, cause us to have to be I post for the state of Missouri, so I understand that. But what I'm saying is that, you know, we can post when we have in our meetings. We can post um, new graduates, you know, things things like that, you know, new members, you know, just let, getting the word out that we're here because people don't know we exist. And the best way to get people to know we exist is through social media. That's just my suggestion. I'm a new member, and that's just my I see what you're saying as far as kind of the, the handouts and things. I guess I understood it differently. I thought you were talking more about having talking points for us as a board to have as opposed to talking points to hand out at different meetings and things. So is that not the, because I, I thought it would be more of if we had talking points that we all just had so we had a consistent message. But I agree with you as far as the handouts. I don't think most people really want to take handouts. But so I don't know if I misunderstood what you were saying, but I, I was thinking more along the lines of if we all had consistent talking right. points, I think there would be I value that. to that. Yeah, I definitely yeah. agree with that. Consistency of messages. Yeah, what I was right. Doing. I'm with you. And that's, and that's what that, uh, Facebook and stuff like that. Records retention is a challenge for sure, but it's not an insurmountable one. Right. Um, Facebook has options where you, depending on the category of account that you've got, you can pull an entire record of every post that's ever been made. Uh, there's services that offer records retention services, but that's a whole different beast to get into. Um, for Facebook itself, I know that our social media team uh, where I work has had occasion where they need to pull like an entire record of everything they've done on certain accounts all the way back to 2014. So it's possible to keep that information. The, the actual nuts and bolts of ensuring the records retention, the records are retained and, and stored properly and maybe stored for the city properly, that's its own beast that might be a little bit challenging. I think there's, from what I see, I think there's probably some nooks and crannies to getting that filled out that would be challenging, but it's not insurmountable. That's something that we, as a group, really decided we wanted to pursue in order to have more public engagement. It is feasible. Just putting that out there for like, just because of my experience with records retention in Facebook. Since only the chair and the vice chair are authorized to speak for the board, does that mean anything we post electronically has to be approved by one or both of them? And for that matter, should it be approved I mean, by the board? If, if you're talking about establishing a social media presence and we need to bring public communications back in here to tell what the existing city policy is on that and whether a board or commission can establish it and then you all will need to have a plan as to how you're going to maintain it. We do not have a budget to pay for a service to retain records. I believe at one point the police department had a service. I don't know if they still do or not. 
it's, it's more complicated than just simply, oh, we're going to retain record. Because basically, if there's not a, a schedule set by the state of Missouri for that record, you have to retain it forever until you get a schedule set. So, and, and I guess the other question is, is how much do you see yourself posting? The, the police department, they have their own PIOs that are operator and they're supervised by the city public communications department. So they're already pushing out information about their promotions and their good deeds and all that. What do you see yourself I, as I a board them. posting? And if, if you're thinking it's gonna be every once in a while, then why don't you write up what you want posted and then I can send that through public communications and they can put it on the city feed if they think it's worthy of that. Um, if, I mean, that, I mean I, you get, kind of have to think about like, how are you going to actually do this and manage this? I mean, it can't just be you know, your own personal thing because at some point you're gonna leave the board in which case the record retention schedule might not be up. So, um, so just saving the information on Facebook itself is not sufficient? It is not sufficient. Okay. So like some of it is you could, one option is you could print every single one of them, but then that piece of paper has to be held. <laughs> um, you could print as, I guess, print as a PDF and then save it electronically, but that would need, you know, somebody would have to organize that and manage that. And I am not gonna be that person unless the city council tells me so, because that is a, a lot of work and that's not something that the law department does for anybody. So if, if you think we have all these great messages we want to put out or we want to put out a message like once a quarter or once a month, then somebody volunteer to write it. Don't make it date specific unless you have to. I mean, if it's, that, if it's like a critical date specific thing, you're gonna do, you might want to do a press release, right? In which case, then it gets sent out on a press release and they promote it on social media. But if you don't have anything that's press release worthy, what is the message? Can you write that up? Then we submit it. We can try. They can either do it on social media. They can do it on the city source. They they have a lot of different things. But we would submit that to public communications. But if you want, like, oh, you're a staff person for the state and you manage a social media feed, well, you all don't have a staff person to manage a social media feed. The law department doesn't have a PIO, so we don't do that. Um, so the way we do it, because we're small, is we go through public communications. Which also means we don't have to deal with retaining records because that's public communications records. On a different note, I ask about a banner. And you can use, we can use the same handout that we used before. How does the board feel about that? Um, I don't care if we do Facebook or whatever, I'm, I'm for anything that the board wants to do. But, you know, three months ago, I asked, two months ago, I asked, you know, what is it going to take for just to get a banner, just like I did the, the, the small presentation for the Rotary. Everyone took handouts, every one of them. So I think it depends on who the audience is, whether they want handouts or not. Some people will and some people won't. Um, and so how does the board feel about investing in a $50 banner? So what would, what would we do with the banner? You'd use the banner if you went to uh, a running event that they had at the city. Not anybody in specific, because I think I understand, one thing I understand about this board is we don't really want to get involved in too much. I think I understand that much. I think a banner makes a table look more attractive if you're yeah, at yeah. an event. And you're standing there and, you know, it, not the event that you got to pay $100 to set up a table. We can set it up out here on the street. Uh, they're having a running event or they have roots and blues. You know, you don't have to go inside, but just... Something so that people will know who you are. Thoughts? We already have the handouts. Um, personally, I feel like the video that they did probably needs to be redone to, 
to redone so that it reflects African Americans because I didn't see one in there. Talking about the video that Rose found in the archive? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm for anything that obviously draws attention, you know, in interest, you know, that it, it, it makes us visible put it that way in the community and uh, causes people to ask questions and want more information. So I don't see harm in doing it. Yeah, so if we have a, 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 a video and nobody sees it, what's, what good is the video? If we have handouts and people don't, we don't distribute them and give them to citizens who may or may not need uh, to come before us, then what good are they? They're no good. Then what good are we? We're no good. The, the banner sounds like it's a relatively minor investment. Well, it was a minor investment a couple of months ago, but I felt like I got a lot of pushback from it, you know. And from so, whom? From Rose. All I asked was that you figure out what sort of banner you want, how much that's going to cost, what sort of events you want to go to, how much that's going to cost, so you could put together a budget and you could see if you have money for that. And the events Otherwise, are going to hang on. You... And hang on. The events are going to cost nothing. But I also heard in our conversation was um, the city's management department was going through a logo change, and so we had to wait until they finished deciding they, that. They, and so it's my understanding they've pushed out a new logo. You can see it on the city website. Um, I don't know where they are. They were talking about for a while for events going to a table covering that would have the city logo on it and no specific department. But I don't know that that's, they've resolved that yet because a lot of departments have their own things like the police department. When they go to an event, they have a very nice spread with their own logos on it. Um, so that's something that they're sorting out. So while you say these events aren't going to cost money, I will tell you as someone who has to work some events, most events cost money. You can't just go to Roots and Blues and set something up outside. There's actually requirements that you can't do that. Is there a fee typically with these things, Rose? There is usually a fee. I only occasionally will get a free event and when I do get those free events, I put your stuff there with my stuff and I go to them. But those are very rare. In fact, there's one a year. Okay, my point is that this board needs to be in, have some semblance of independence. Um, and not tag along with the police department or the law department. Nothing against them. But we need to be able to stand on our own so that if I'm a block away from Roots and Blues, there's nothing they can do to me, really, or two blocks away, or, or anywhere. Uh, it, and it seems like this fee thing keeps coming up when the Rotary didn't charge me anything to speak. A speaking engagement, I was encouraging you to do what you did, which is the Rotary sure. um, and what Andrew did, go to neighborhood associations. Those things don't cost you anything, and those are audiences who want information and they gladly take your brochure. When you're talking about events like Earth Day, Pride Fest, all those things cost money. It doesn't, you know, like if you have a plan as to how many events you want to go to and what that cost is, then we ask the city council to fund your banner and your events. You see, you ask for funding to do that. And then if the council says, yeah, that's a great idea, here's the money, then we order your stuff and then you all can register for your events because you would have a budget for that. You see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying, that's, but I that's think... That's how it works. I see what you're saying, but as a board, you know, I think we all understand that we have students and we have people that work, so we can't say we're going to do 13 events. We can't say that uh, because we're volunteers like many other groups, and so why can't we just get a banner use the brochures that we have, and when someone goes to speak to the Boy Scouts, get the banner, get the brochures, and that's it. So something that I'm, I, I feel like I'm seeing right, I think we're all kind of right. I think when we first initially brought this up and we talk about events, we're thinking stuff like Pride Fest, Earth Day, bigger ones. And the last meeting, we sort of kind of broached upon smaller speaking engagements, which is much more feasible to less, it's less feasible to track, but it's much more feasible to just kind of take on the fly. And, and for that, it's beneficial to just go ahead and have the banner 
or the table covering so that we can just kind of hit it and go as the opportunity arises without having to plan out six months of events that we know we want to use a banner for. Should those happen, we could maybe tackle those separately uh, and fill out a plan. Should we identify the higher level events that would cost money that we would need to budget for, we could identify those and sep submit that separately. But on its own, I think the table covering the banner is just a small cost that we know we'd have use for in the much more relative short term. So then the question is, like, what does that look like? You know, like what, what you said $50. I don't know what a $50 banner is. Like, do you want a four foot banner, a six foot banner, an eight foot banner, a table covering? Um, one of the things I've noticed when people go to events, having to had to do this before, is the table sizes vary. Um, so, and sometimes they come with table coverings and sometimes they, you have to bring your own. Um, sometimes there's no place to actually hang the banner from. So you have to have like a, a banner that I think of is either one of the ones you, that have the grommets that you hang from something or it's one of those ones that rolls up and then goes up and stands up. But those are really expensive. So it kind of depends on what it is you want. So that's why I was encouraging you to look at what banners are and what they cost so you can decide what is it you actually want to buy. So if Bill goes by Office Depot and kind of sends to the board some of the things that he see and we make a decision as a board, Correct. then we can what present you, it to you? What you would do is if, if he even comes up, any of you come up with an idea of, hey, this is kind of what we want to do and this is the retail price, then I can go and see what the city price is gotcha. okay. that has been bid. So and you're basically can, telling us we need to do our part to put it in motion. Okay. You, you, need, to, you need to figure out what it is because you may each of you may have a different idea of what this banner is going to look like. I don't know what you as a collective whole right. want this banner to look like or table covering or what <clears> you want it to be. Um, I didn't know until I started working in events, like I would just go to events and I didn't really pay that much attention. I didn't think it was gonna be that hard or difficult. But once I got assigned the duty to do some events, I realized, oh, I, you know, there are things you don't think of. If you come with a banner, but all you have is a table, you have to have some way to fix the banner to the table. As compared to a table covering, which you just throw over and the logo's in the right place. So there's. It kind of just depends on how you see yourself using these things as to what sort of thing you would want to get. Okay, so can I make a suggestion? I do a lot of events. Most band, most table covers are 10, 10 foot long table covers. You can get some that's eight feet. So if we get one that is 10 feet, you have to sometimes um, drape it over the whole table and that actually hangs over the can readjust it sometimes, but if you get an eight foot one, you're gonna ha it's not gonna come all the way to the floor. It's just gonna be all the way to the floor. I suggest that we get an eight foot one so it drapes over on the sides and it's never it's not too big to where you have to kind of fold it if you get a smaller table, but an eight foot one with our logo on the front of it, that's my suggestion. What I'd like to put forth is go out, come up with some options, bring them back and we go from there. Here, I like to recommend we get, ask three people, Doesn't, don't care who it is, I don't even care what it looks like. <laughs> well, ask three people. You are leading the charge. Okay, well then I've I got one like, already, so you can put me down for one. Okay, two, and what we'll do is then we'll just get together and then we'll come up with some design. I'll, we'll, I'll be number three. Okay, there we go. Okay, are you, well, let me, are you establishing official subcommittee which will require minutes and yes. agendas? Yes. Jesus, I wanted or to stay away from there because that's... Or do you just want to, or what you're trying to do is, three of you are going to do research on your own and bring back your recommendations next month. It's not, an official, it's not an official subcommittee, it's yeah. just three Let's people each are going to do it informal research. It just depends research. upon what you're trying to do. If you're trying to establish an official subcommittee, you're no, going to have to... No, it's informal research, not, yes, not a subcommittee. Well, yeah, I think that would be the easiest. All three of us just bring something to the next meeting. Thank you. How about we do that? Can we just, yep. e can we just email each, each other? Well, that would still count as a subcommittee. Can we just email them to Rose? 
Yeah. Like it just like rather than us trying to hold on to some for a, a month, can we just email it to Rose? And hang on, hang on. Let Rose compile it just for. Is there any way that the three of us can do this without the quorum? Because sending it to Rose is not doing anything, except because there's no form, there's no shape. Well, but we're, no we're going to have to involve Rose because even whatever research you guys do, She'll you're going to come with a retail month. price. She's got to compare it out to the bidder price to officially buy it. So it's going to have to go through Rose anyways. I'm just saying rather than but that's rather what, than you pull but it But that's once we decide yes. as a board what we want. Yeah. That's, that's when we would Rose would have to get involved. We do that in five minutes. If you guys, if everyone who's doing it has some good options, we can look at it and say, all right, I like that. Let's go with this. Here's a price. Let's do it. If all we're doing is logo and citizens police review board, then we just got to pick a color. Mm -hmm. And if we already can agree to do a table covering, I then we've done half the battle. We just need to get some prices, get it to Rose, yeah. figure it out, and go. I, I think there is a color with the new logo, so I, I don't even think you have to pick color. So if, if I think as the plan is, who, and I would say not just the three of you, any of you, if you come across something you think is a good idea for what, it, what this is, kind of size, look, or whatever, just send, send everything to me, preferably as a deadline a week before the next meeting. No, let's say... How about you get it to me in the next two weeks? Because that will give me a week to go up to purchasing and find out how much, you know, which ones are available easily through city different city contracts. And then I can send all that information out to you. And then you'll have the different looks of the different banner table covering thingy, sign things, and potential prices um, before your next meeting. And you can make a decision at the next meeting. And then we can also see what your budget is. And quick question to keep everything on the up and up because at my, my company, we have a printing department. We print these things out on a regular basis. I have plenty that I take to career fairs and we print them out for different fairs and things that we do. Is it an issue with doing it from a company of um, someone that work, is on the board? Yeah, is it an issue for my company like, to print something you, out for the are board? Are you saying if shelter insurance donates Okay, but and that's then, what I'm asking. Then I want not even getting into the budget question. Okay, I'm asking is if there's any kind of conflict with doing that. Yeah, so we if can't, we're good, we can't. The city couldn't. That's okay. the thing. But so okay. if it's a donation, it's not an issue. Um, would donate it? No, but we'll, okay. Does it make sense? Yeah, I mean, we're talking like these aren't for the table runners and things of that sort. It's like fifteen bucks, so it's it's not a large amount, and I can print those out in house and bring it to the next meeting. So I'm saying I could make it pretty easy if that was something that we wanted to do. Vote on it, Daryl. If we have to vote on it, I don't think a vote. Rose, a vote's not required on this, is it? If all you're doing is you all are going to go do some research and it's, okay. a, it's a research issue, it's <laughs> just get it done. This, I mean, this is not a, this is a research thing, and once we come up with some ideas, then we can have a vote and we'll move forward from there. Anything else under outreach and public communications? So, Rose, who'd you say we have, we'd have to talk to for a? Social media account, someone, you said some department. We would need, I, I don't know if it's public communications or community relations, but the Steve Sapp and Brian Adkinson need to come in and we, we need to know what it is you want to do and then I can say this is what they want to do. Okay. And then if they felt they need to come talk to you about it. Um, last time I tried to send a press release out about something they, they deemed, <laughs> they, they told me, well, they didn't think that was press worth press release worthy okay um, so they they are now you know they are the department that speaks for the city so um, but on the same time I write articles for city source and they publish them in city source so um, in the past members of the board have written articles and things of that sort and, and letters to the editor of newspapers and things of that sort you know those are free avenues of communication and so what if a citizen made a unofficial board page? Run, no, never mind. Never mind. We'll, 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 we'll stop. Uh, no, I'm, yeah. I wasn't clear but, on what you said. If a citizen made what? You're still, made it. as a board, if, 
you're still subject to all the state laws mm -hmm. regarding because you're a public governmental body. Yeah. Okay. So you would have records retention requirements. You'd have sunshine requirements. All of that. I I don't know the current status with public communications as to whether or not individual boards and commissions are allowed to have social media presences. The ones I know about are all at the department level, and it's all run by departments who have implanted within their department a public information officer. Yeah, someone that focuses yeah, just on that. Yeah, I got you. All right. Thanks. So what we do is we use public communications, community relations department as our PIO, and so when you all have a press release to go out, I send it through them and they send it out. I write the article for City Source and they put it in, that sort of thing. Anything else? Hearing nothing, moving on to item seven, new business, Nick, uh, Nicole conference voting member. We have to have either Mr. Nichols or Ms. Williams designated as our voting member by the 14th, which is two days from today, which would be Friday, correct, Rose? I, I haven't looked at the deadline yeah. in a while. So the deadline is um, the 14th, and since you two are attending the conference, we need to designate one of the two of you as the voting proxy since um, neither Andrew nor I are going. Do you want to tell them what that involves? Yeah, I, think I, I don't care either way, there. but I was about to ask like, what all is going to be, right. the responsibilities right. inherent to it. Sure. Basically, you will vote on any actions on behalf of um, the member of CPRB as a member of NACOL. It includes voting for the president, vice president, any changes to the bylaws and then anything like that. You'll get a copy of that in advance. You'll attend the meetings, meet the um, candidates. We will probably have submit to you our preferences as far as who we think would be the best candidate and you would just submit the proxy. Yeah, I think it's one night like that they meet and vote. Like after the day worth of Conference. Oh, at the yeah. conference. Yeah. Yeah, at the conference. Gotcha. And it's just a submission of the proxy, yeah. but you have to physically be there to submit the proxy. Go for it, Mr. Nichols. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> so, Mr. Okay. Nichols will be serving as the voting member at the NACOL conference. No idea what you're in for. <laughs> it's a thrill. Nor do they. You get, to say you're, you get to say you're important, I uh, <laughs> Moving on to item eight, general comments by the public, members, and staff. If there are any members of the public that wish to be heard, please come forward. You'll need to speak into the microphone, please. My name is Kathleen Operud and- And Ms. Operud, I hate to do this, but you have a right. case before us this evening that we might be hearing in closed session. And I would not be inclined to take any comments prior to hearing that case. What are the feelings of the other board members? I would not want to taint any discussions prior to going into? I just want, may I just say one thing? There's a case supplemental report that I think is a lot of inaccuracies, and I just want someone to look at that real good. When you and that was the document that we received tonight, correct? Um, there's the original police report, and then they came up with a case supplemental report that I totally disagree with 70% of what's on there. And I just want you all to look at that real good. Okay. And I just want to say thank you for reading my letters if you have. I'm sorry I, I submitted so many of them. And I, I did so feeling bad, but I did so anyway. So I, if you don't want any more comments, that's fine. But I just wanted to identify yes. myself. Yeah, we've got the um, document that you submitted on the 10th. And we also had something that you submitted this evening. That's correct. I was concerned the body cam might have gotten altered. So that's why I wrote sure. that. 
Okay, so I won't say anything else because I don't think you want me to, but the case supplemental report I just got like three days ago, and I was really flabbergasted we've, when I read we've, it. We've okay. got them. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I have a question for you. Just out of curiosity, how did you find out about the Polish Review Board? Um, on the letter that I got from the police that said my complaint so unfounded, it was on there. Plus a, a, a council member emailed me and told me about it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The council member was in Ward 2, and, and he's the one who really brought to my attention that I should do this. I read it on the letter I got from the police department, but he actually brought it to my attention when he emailed me, and that's when I really took action. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Please. And when you come up, please state your name. I'm Chad McLaurin, live at 1807 Jackson Street. Um, I'm sorry, what was your name? Again, please. Chad McLaurin, I live at 1807 Jackson Street. I'm usually here on the city council nights, and uh, I did serve for a brief period of time on a, uh, the Human Rights Committee, so I, I can understand your headaches with the, um, the ins and outs of like group management, just trying to get anything done. <laughs> what, what I haven't heard, um, and, and this will probably be getting its way back to um, Race Matters friends, just you know, I'm not here to officially represent them, but I work closely with them. And um, obviously the Police Review Board is something that we're very um, interested in and kind of hearing um, you know, what, what your basic feelings are towards certain things. Um, for example, we are very strong advocates of the community policing initiatives, and we have seen in recent um, what appears to be, if not outright sabotage, definitely a downplaying of community policing in favor of saturation policing. Um, we have seen um, horrendous issues with morality on the police force, and this is not to sit there and point fingers, and um, I'm not sure how well this narrative is really being shared across um, the different groups. I don't think anybody's here is pointing to individual uh, police officers, for example, and, and stating that you know they're inherently racist or driven by certain things, but there are definitely some certain practices in law enforcement that go back to some very racist um, or very classist, which the two are usually inseparable um, issues. And so, um, as a function of the police review board, I would think that would be at, you know one of the interests we're looking at is are the police actually upholding um, you know their standard of care for our community, and that community needs to be expanded to include everybody in Colombia. You know, we should not be having discussions about the black community in Colombia because they should be Colombians. We should all be kind of getting the same equity and treatment. Um, so do you guys have any um, feedback with the new data that's been rolling out with some of the pressures I know with the information that Race Matters Friends brings to the table, the questions, the uh, Chief Burton's replies, um, even the city manager's replies? Do you guys have any um, feedback or position that you're taking or you're trying to Assert. I mean, exactly where do your authorities, uh, I guess, stop, I guess, when it comes I, to the police? I would say that we are not just focused only on We are focused on Columbia, period. Right. We cover every area and every situation in Columbia as a board. I, I'm speaking for myself. I, I just don't sit up here and think about one group of people. I'm thinking about everybody who lives in Columbia, from the college students to a single mom to someone who has disabilities to someone who is gay, lesbian, whatever. I am up here representing all of those, and that's who I'm always thinking about is everybody who lives here because everybody in Columbia has a right to ha live here and have an enjoyable life. Do you, do you think the I think, that, living up I think that? he's pretty much summed up the position based, of the based entire on the board. data and the discussion. Do you think the police department is living up to that? And if not, then, or if so, I mean, wh wh where is where is the the difference in opinion coming from? I think they're trying, and no, you will never find a police department that is one hundred percent perfect, but they are trying. And there's a lot of barriers and a lot of things that's behind the scene that they have to deal with on a day to day basis. But I think that they're trying, because if they weren't trying, they wouldn't be here. And I think, and I think a lot of it looks at how the data, data is analyzed. Do you have enough data points? What are the points of analysis? We don't know what unknowns are out there, and we don't know are we looking specifically at the right information. You know, we might be, and there might be some things that we can take a look at. 
and there might be some things that we're not looking at, there might be some things that we're not collecting that we don't even know we should be collecting. I'm not a statistician, I just don't know, but I think it's something that we've got to take, begin looking at, and this is at least a starting point. And looking from a national standard, um, oh wow, God, I forgot your name. Andrew, yeah. Andrew and I are both um, certified practitioners of oversight. And we go and we've looked at the national standards and what we've seen is CPD does have a lot of positive initiatives that as a national organization, um, NACOL, which you just heard us mention, holds a lot of departments accountable for and that should be the standard that they should strive for and CPD is hitting those benchmarks already. The data does not always tell the whole story. And so I think we need to look at a number of different things and look at a number of different criteria and not always just the data. Yeah, the data might be telling a story that we need to pay attention to, absolutely. And not diminishing that at all, but it's not always the be all and end all to the story. If I may, I'd like to address two, two issues. One is community policing, the other is officer report. Um, community policing, the way it is practiced currently within Columbia is working, as is evidenced by the crime statistics. If you will. Uh, three in the one strategic neighborhood where it's been in place the longest, complemented by the other two, and then the increase in crime rate, uh, to believe that community policing citywide can occur without more officers, I think, I can't get around that. I just can't, okay? Um, to Daryl's point about statistical analysis, um, I was at the uh, workshop a couple of weeks ago, I don't know if you were there or not, that the uh, city put on about uh, uh, where uh, Dr. Friedel spoke via Whatever that electronic <laughs> communication was, regardless, um, you've seen, I've seen, two ways of analyzing the same data, coming up with two very different results. I liken that to watching Fox, and watching MSNBC. They're both dealing with the same events, but they have totally different perspectives. So uh, um, I think data analysis is risky at best. I don't know who said it. What is it? They're, they're uh, liars, damn liars, and then there's statistics or something of that sort. Uh, to some degree, you can make stats say just about anything you want them to. I'm not a statistician. But uh, um, I, I would I would I guess interject on that point because I, I'm, I'm with you. I understand uh, the problems with comparing this to, like, say, um, MSNBC and Fox is they're not required to actually tell you the truth at all. The police department, if they have statistics that they're reporting, that's supposed to measure something. And if it's not, then we have a real problem. And the police department should be correcting that. And we're not talking about stats. We're talking about basic numbers. We're talking about number of stops, we're talking about ratios and populations, we're talking about frequencies and location. These are very, very simple calculations that you really can't contort that many ways. So if you look at a 400, 500% discrepancy in the vehicle stop data for black drivers being pulled over in Columbia, that should make you sit up and pay attention. And that should be something that should be at the head of what other things we're not looking at in the police department. Um, morale is, you know, you know I, I worked 20 years in the military so I understand the organizations, I understand the executive branch, I understand it's a thankless job a lot of times, and I, I, I get it. There's a lot, of, a lot of issues going on here. But by the same token is that if you have the review capacity and we can't even look at the process and figure out how are we assessing, like say the annual performance of these police officers, how are we trying to even detect um, people who might be not living up to the code of, of policing? I mean, how do we hold them accountable? We haven't held Chief Burton accountable I don't think Mike Mathis, I mean, there seems to be like a lot of top cover coming 
with some very kind of standard questions that have been asked for the last four years that have not been adequately answered. You know, we spent 30 minutes talking about a brochure. Right. <laughs> to let people know that we're here. But people out there, they, they have problems. The people that the police serve, they have problems with police to some degree. And I worked for years within a court system, the Supreme Court of the state of Alabama. And I was a cop 17 years, and I wrote a lot of tickets, and I believe in statistics will tell you something if you want to listen. And it just appears to me, without being influenced by Race Matters friends or Don Love, the guy that I know, or if you don't listen to those numbers, um, those in the minority, be they people of color or whoever, whoever, they're the ones that suffer. And so I'll leave with each one of you. Who is, you know, are you your brother's keeper? <laughs> I mean, unless people come in here and see us and talk to us and tell us their issues, then it's, you know, you saw how long we spent. You know, it's almost impossible for us to agree on a banner, <laughs> right. let alone any other type of... Um, big issue that we might have. And then when you magnify that to the city council and, and, and the, the police union who wants to support the cops and give them big raises and then the people who are, feel they're being mistreated and then trying to make all this stuff match, it just muddies the water and, and then we get, you know, lies and things like that and, and, and mistrust. You know, and so sure, you know, nobody up here may may say that, you know, but sure there is a, a big problem, and there are people who who are turning their who are turning their heads. Well, the fact it's, that you just though they're I not. Appreciate. Yeah. Sorry. Please. Okay. What's your name again? Chad McLaurin. So, whenever there's a problem, you should always have something. If you see a problem, try to figure out a solution. So, what is your solution? My solution is listen to the people who have poured their efforts into this. And like from my experience, I know that the people who are heading up Race Matters Friends, for example, they are taking a very disciplined approach to a lot of this. And whether or not you like the people who are delivering the messages or you find them hostile to your position or to you even, that should be secondary to the fact it's like, do they have something to bring to the table? And I absolutely believe they do. Um, Tracy by herself knows far more than I ever will on this matter, I'm pretty sure. That's her so sole focus of study. Uh, that's been her lived experiences. That's been what she has spent most of her adult life pursuing. And she gets with other like-minded individuals. And so I think when you, when you have an organization like that that's willing to do the legwork for you, we'd be kind of negligent not to build like a working relationship and at least get some ideas. Have we even done an analysis of like what the current policies are in the police department? Like, for example, if we have worries about like the data, is it even measuring what we want it to measure? When's the last time that's been reviewed? When's the last time we look at the way that the police officers are actually held accountable or held to a standard as part of their employment? I, I assume you guys have annual reviews at least, correct? Okay, um, at some point, and this is probably my own negligence here, but I would like to get a hold of like, I assume there's like a form and areas of performance that they have to. It's citywide, it's not tailored to specifically to the police department. We're required to do the city of one that the same, every single employee get uh, held to. And, Okay, okay, I find a problem with that, a huge problem with that, because your police department is not a, ci a city employee by, you know, most comparisons of their job performance. So that might be something like where if there is no standard to hold them accountable to, then there's no, 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 no mystery as to why there's so a you said problem. about You mentioned about traffic stops, so how would you fix that? How would you change that? Because I know you've sat at a table and you said her suggestions on how to fix that, how to change that. How would you do that? By, by taking a look at like what the policy is. If you have a historical hotspot, and whether or not that's, that's true or not, whether it's factual or not, if it just becomes in the minds of the police force policy, like, hey, we have this problem with this neighborhood because of the rundown houses, because of the economy, people who are vulnerable, it might be a matter of like you send, spend more time focusing on this area. The more you focus on this area, the more you're going to find. It's, it's just a simple self-reinforcing cycle of over-policing in that regard, unless you step back once in a while and take a look at these policies and say, are we being equitable in terms of how we're spreading our policing? I mean, I would think probably one of the hot spots around town, probably Frat Row. Uh, how many police units do we have down there by comparison? 
that should be that should be your saturation policing right there and you know saving like you know some of these um, you know sexual assaults and underage drinking and problems like that where we can nip that stuff in the bud but I mean it's uh, there's there's numerous things and again I would have that conversation with the people who are making this kind of their life's work you are aware that the data that is being analyzed is data that CPD is required by the state to collect yeah it's not data that CPD has any Control over, although they could embellish it, they could add, you know, additional uh, data points, data collection right. uh, items uh, that might help. Uh, I think they should have other points. You have other points. I, I could sit down and start drafting on those, and I'd be more happy to work with Race Matters Friends and try to come up with some kind of proposal if you think it's something that uh, you'll take a look at. I know we've had conversations with like multiple different people. I don't know how many times they come here and talk specifically but to this committee, but. The role of this board is to remain independent so that they handle appeals on the police chief's decision on the complaint. So they're not necessarily going to take a position as a group on this issue because then they would be losing their independence. Roles, but part of our responsibility also is to make recommendations to the police department would you correct me or not am i wrong regarding regarding police policies sure and i think that's what he's talking about if i'm not mistaken um i would interpret policies to be their policies that are available on their website and i don't know if this gets into i don't know their policies well enough to know if this gets into their policies or not but this is a community conversation that's already involving the city council right um the city council is the one who is you know like if they find that there's going to be a need through this through their work that they need to direct the city manager to direct the police chief to do something that's where that's going to come in but you you all need to be very careful to keep your independence because these matters may come to you on an appeal well then i have a question then I'd like for you at our next meeting to, to look at the particular um, the guidance that, that, will, that tells us what we can and what we cannot do regarding providing the police department, um, uh, providing them with some type of, um, it's not oversight, but, um, but to review certain things and not just cases. I can send you your duties again. It's in well, the Well, I, I didn't ask you to send me that. I asked you to kind of look at that and then kind of put it down where the goats can get it to where we can, because I'm not understanding, because I can read. And, and I don't know if you're, what you're, maybe you're saying something to me. I'm, I'm just, I mean, basically all I could really do in that regard is repeat what is set forth in the ordinance. Um, that sets the parameters the City Council chose for you and those parameters were developed by a Citizens Committee appointed by the Council to make recommendations as to how the board should be structured and functioned years ago and then the board over time has recommended changes to those ordinances that some of those changes were adopted by the Council and some were not there's not any case law out there about it because you all just make recommendations. You do not um, make binding decisions that go up on appeal. So there's really, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, if, if you read it, if you read your ordinances again and you don't understand them, then let me know and we can talk about what you're not understanding in the ordinance. But it's how you are going to interpret your duties. What I'm trying to say here is he seems to want you to weigh in on what this should look like for your community on a project the city council who is the governing board is already looking at and deciding and if you all start weighing into those areas which are very likely to come before you then you're going to have to recuse and if suddenly you don't have a quorum because so many of you have weighed in on something or the board as a whole has then people lose the ability to, to have their appeals heard by a citizen's group. So I think that's where you have to be very, Rightly. you do, you have to, and it, it would be one thing if the city council wasn't already looking into it, but you know the city council is already aware of this issue. They are looking into it. It is their role to decide 
these sorts of what political issues. Didn't we have that opportunity with Sergeant Fox in, their, in his presentation? I mean, that was kind of getting our input. I think on those. the community policing, but I don't know that it's necessarily, I, I think he's talking about that. a little bit more than community policing. I've been ignoring you for a while. No, it's okay. Um, so thank you for coming. And I think that you bring up a lot of really good points. And I want to kind of go off of what Rose just said about us being kind of an independent board and not really voicing all of our personal opinions. Um, but I think what's really important is that people like you come to our meetings and tell us what your issues are so we can be aware of them. Um, and so if you and your group want to go out and get more people to come out here and come to our meetings and see what we're doing and give us more to discuss, I think that that would be really great. And I think that's one of the reasons why we spent so much time today talking about a brochure. So people know that we're here and know that this is a forum where they can come and voice their concerns and talk to us about these issues so we're aware of them. And I think it's also really important that we're out there educating people about what the process is if they're not happy with the way that the police has treated them. If they have an issue, a bad interaction with the police, that they can file a complaint. And even if they aren't happy with the outcome of that complaint, that they can come to us and we can review it and we can work through this process in a fair and just way as we see it right now. And I think that that will lead to the most amount of change. Because if lots of people come in with similar complaints and are com continuously appealing on the same complaints over and over and over again, then we see a pattern there. And then that pattern gets discussed with city council and with city officials and with the police department so those patterns can be addressed. Um, with people not really knowing about us and not coming to our meetings and us being aware of, or unaware, unable to act on issues because they have not been brought in front of us in a formal capacity, that leaves us kind of stuck because there's not a lot we can do if it hasn't been addressed to us in a formal capacity. So I think that it's really great that you're here talking to us because that tells us that you care about the issue, but we need more people from the community to take the steps that you've done today. If that makes sense at all. Thanks. If, if I may, reason discussion gets you a lot further than button heads. And frankly, what I saw at the, um, the workshop was at the CPOA with the, way the data, their person analyzed it. Uh, you've got Empower Missouri, how they analyze it. Um, you've got RMF, uh, very passionate about issues that I think are important. But they're button heads. And it's just, I don't see progress being made people are just so at odds. It, it almost strikes me that a mediator is needed. One of the you have, you I have, well, I, I was just going to say, you have done a very good job of presenting a reasoned discussion or conducting a reasoned discussion of a situation you feel very strongly about. Emotions get out of hand at times. They just get out of hand. And uh, I know from my own experiences in sales, once emotion takes over, you're lost. Both sides lose. There's got to be a way to step back from where we are. I don't, frankly, I don't know how, how to do that. And I don't think changing, uh, if, if changing city manager, chief of police, you got to start with the city council, which means you got to change city council. And right. they're involved. And, and again, that comes back to the question of, like, as citizens, we do go to city council. Also, we have a committee here that is, seems to have like a lot of shared interests. And so, I mean, within the capacity that you guys can operate, I think that's one of the things I think would, or I would like to at least consider or pursue. So that was, again, my reason for being here tonight. Well, we appreciate your comments and we appreciate yeah. you coming in. Right. Thank you. Thank you much. Thank you, sir. Anything else from uh, members of the public? Barbara Jefferson. Welcome. Okay. I just want to say that I think it's, uh, it bothers me that this Citizen Police Review Board is not made known to the public. 
as much as the city council meetings are. Now, I can sit at home all day for two days and listen to my news from Columbia, Missouri, and I can hear that there's going to be a city council meeting. I never, ever hear about a city police review board meeting. I wonder why that is. We, we are regularly scheduled. Um, no, I'm just yeah. saying that in, you can hear it on the TV about the city council people, but you can't never hear that this is going on. Um, not to give you a wise guy answer, contact your TV stations. We we well, can't just, tell them what the cover. I understand what you're saying, too, but it just seems like if you can make sure it gets out about the city council, it should be able to make sure you get out about the citizen police review, or review board also. I mean, I should not have to call Channel 17 and say, hey, can you uh, run a, a, a message about a meeting that, to me, is, is equally as important oh, as what the city council does. We We're absolutely have agree. so much policing problems in Columbia that needs to be addressed in all areas, and I mean all areas. Vice Chair Andrew Fisher mentioned He's a gentleman sitting next to Mr. Smith up here. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, no, no. Uh, he mentioned uh, he went to one of the neighborhood meetings, 15 in attendance. 15, yeah. Nobody knew about us. We appreciate what you're saying, and I think what you're going to see from this board, one, one of the things I believe, and we've discussed at length here, is that personal contact is going to do far more than what you see on television or anything else. And I think. I know I've got a list of uh, maybe half a dozen organizations or groups to contact to find out who, like Andrew Fisher did and Bill Davis uh, and uh, Mr. Jones. Um, we need to be out in front of people so that they know we exist, so that they know there is uh, an avenue to vent concerns that go well, beyond the police department. And the only way I, I can see in doing that is not necessarily one-on-one -on -one contact, but a Citizens Police Review Board person standing in front of a group talking about who we are and what we do. And I just really feel like that the neighborhood association meetings that I went to, I went to one last night at Ridgeway. You know, I just think that uh, they would have loved to hear what you do. What, well, and where? Just a, there's a police person was there yep the one that runs that beat and if they could let us know when those meetings and are they well. are every second tuesday at six o'clock we're at always the open Club. to doing presentations in front well, of i'm groups, just so. telling you places that you should you could think about you know it, it's just not it just bothers me that what you do here is not does not seem to get as much attention or you know it's not spread as well as what the city council people are doing do you know the master list of uh, neighborhood associations or uh, community meetings that would list or how do you find out about yeah it? how do you that's so I live in the area list. and I talk to the people that go to the meetings okay but probably yeah there is there's supposed to be a neighborhood service that's connected with the city somehow or another that we have to bring our, what, who did you say, uh, Bill Cantor? Bill yes. Cantwell. He was there, yeah, he's the one, because he was there last night talking about some concerns that Ridgeway area has. There, there is a list of neighborhood associations that the board in the past has emailed out and made contact with the neighborhood associations asking to come speak, some of who took the board up on it and some who did not. Most so did I not. say continue you can doing that. Do that. Please again. continue to do that. Y yes, and, and just a, a comment that, that uh, I've made more than, than once, it's, it, and this is not a reason for us to not do better, but the oldest such organization in the country is in Kansas City, their oversight organization, and they will tell you that they struggle with that as well there in terms of getting that word out to I'm the just, public that they're there, I'm what they do. What I, I mean. As a citizen here in Columbia, this is just as much as important for the citizens to know about and to come in and voice what's going on in reality out there in Columbia as what the city council people set up and tell us about what they want to do, but they really don't do. And I just, I really ask your committee to maybe look into what 
policy you can change about what your function is. I keep hearing the word independent as something like maybe that should frighten you or something like that, but maybe you should really kind of review what really can be changed. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anything else from members of the public? Anything from members of the board? <laughs> Anything from Rose or Sergeant Tate? Um, I got some news for you. Uh, effective this past Sunday, I've been promoted to the position of lieutenant. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good job. Uh, so what does that mean? It means that I'll be stepping away from internal affairs here in the coming days. Uh, so this is essentially will be my last meeting, more than likely. Wow. Um, policy requires that my position, internal affairs sergeant, be open for 10 days before they fill it. Uh, so that process is ongoing right now. Um, what will happen is uh, probably in about two weeks there will be a, somebody else in doing my job. However, um, that's the transition will take place. I will still be involved in um, training that individual and on a constant basis. Um, and I, I probably will be at the next meeting just to introduce the individual that uh, they choose. But I just wanted to say it's been a pleasure working with you, probably uh, a highlight of my career. Uh, it's set me up well to take the next step and hopefully for my future. And I consider each and every one of you colleagues and uh, we'll still be available. Uh, you all have my email, so uh, if, uh, questions and uh, anything I can do to help, I'm, I'm still over there until they kick me out or I decide to call it quits permanently. So um, don't hesitate to, to get a hold of me. Um, as of now, I'm still, I'm still in charge of the IA unit. So um, until you hear differently, you still refer your questions and comments and concerns to me. Congrats. Any idea what your next assignment's going to be? I, it sounds like I'm probably going to, well, the, the, the switchover is in January, so for the next few months, I'm probably going to end up on uh, day squad, uh, uh, the red squad on day six to four. You will be missed. <laughs> Thank you. What part of the city? Um, I think Northwest will be my primary responsibility as far as uh, quadrant, but obviously the whole city when I'm working. <laughs> Thanks. Congrats. Anything else? Moving on to item 10, is there a motion to go into closed session? I will make a motion to go into closed session. To